Merry Christmas. Today we celebrate the facts and the amazing events of Jesus' birth. And we start our worship of our Savior with hymn number 34, Now Sing We Now Rejoice, which you can find in the red hymnals in front of you or projected on the screens. Lord's blessings on your worship. Mary thought about it. Mary let it fill her heart. There was a lot Mary could have been thinking about. There was a lot Mary could have let fill her heart. Like anger at the government over her. They commanded a census. She could have thought, These greedy people just want to get every cent out of us so that even a woman who is nine months pregnant has to make this long journey. There was a lot Mary could have let fill her heart. Like stress. Not just the stress of having a baby, which is stressful enough, but the stress of not being able to stay in a nice guest room but being forced to stay in a place where animals are the primary residents. Or how about annoyance? She had had a long journey. She was in labor, and then the shepherds showed up. Women in the congregation, would you invite in a bunch of dirty men into the hospital room where you just gave birth? How about being overwhelmed? Did you hear what the shepherds said about her baby? What was she to do with this child? Should she feel guilty for bringing the Lord into the world in in this place? What was she going to do now with the Messiah, the Lord? How about confusion at God's plan? How about frustration at God's plan? What are you putting us through here, Lord? This is your son. Is this really how you want him to live? How about a little help, God? There was a lot Mary could have been thinking about. There was a lot Mary could have let fill her heart. But Mary treasured the events of Jesus' birth. She thought about the great things God was doing. She let the grace of God fill her heart. What do we let roll around in our minds? What do we let fill our hearts? Maybe right now as we sit in church, it is the Christmas story. That's why we've come here, after all, to hear about Jesus, the Savior born to us. We come here for not too long to take a break from the secular Christmas that can be fun but is almost completely removed from the real comfort and joy of Christmas. We come here and hear about Jesus born to save us. But what about after this Christmas Eve service? What about in the rest of the month of December? What do we usually let sit on our minds and fill our hearts? Maybe during this season, you've tried to fill your heart with joy, and you've tried to do that by filling your family's hearts with joy, so that any Christmas event, any uh, Christmas tradition, You've made sure to do it and do it to the max. You've taken advantage of the holiday deals so that gift opening can be exciting and successful. And maybe as you try to fill your hearts and your family's hearts with joy, that put pressure on you. And your heart was also filled with stress and anxiety. What do we let fill our hearts here in the month of December? Dread? 
dread knowing that you will spend this Christmas with your family and you know what happens when your family gets together. The passive aggressiveness, the disappointment, the fighting. Maybe the focus on family during this holiday season has filled your heart with sadness. Grief over the lost spouse. The dark cloud over the family gathering, over the one who isn't going to be there this Christmas. What do we let sit on our minds most often? Is it our strong opinions on world events and politics so that we can't stop thinking about the latest thing the Pope has said or the latest Supreme Court decision from Colorado, which, depending on where you stand, can either be you know, a great step in the right direction or a step towards the end of democracy? What do we let sit on our minds? Maybe sometimes it's outright sinful thoughts about other people so that we always see the faults in others and think, how could that person be so stupid? Or how could that person be so weird? Sinful thoughts like anger. My parents just don't get it. Why does my child act out like this? What was my boss thinking? Who does that coworker think he is? What is wrong with these people? Outright sinful thoughts like lust. So that maybe we didn't mean to see that or look at that person that way, but then let it sit on our minds and dwell on it for too long. Where do these things lead, these things that we think about and let sit on our hearts. The sin grows and becomes something more. The pressure builds and the anxiety sets in. We start to see more and more things in the world through these lenses of sin, thinking about everything from a prideful stance or with disgust toward other people. And then when we realize how sinful our thoughts and our hearts can be, maybe our heart then starts to fill with guilt and maybe even despair at times. There's a lot we could think about. There's a lot we could let fill our hearts. But today, God gives us something to think about. Today, God fills our hearts with something. God brings you the message today that a Savior has been born to you. So let's go with Mary and think about the great things God has done. Let's go with Mary and let the grace of God fill our hearts. Let's go with Mary and treasure what God has done in bringing Jesus into the world. So Caesar Augustus issued a decree. From everything we know about history, Caesar Augustus believed in and promoted false gods. He was an unbeliever. He had no idea that what he was doing was serving the purpose of the living God. And yet... God used that decree from the government to bring the Savior into the world exactly where he said he would come from. You wonder if Mary was thinking about this on her journey to Bethlehem. Now, we don't know if Mary knew or was thinking about that prophecy from Micah that said that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. But we know it. And we are amazed at the way that God can work through history to serve his purpose, then and now. Mary had to go to Bethlehem to register. Bethlehem, the town that David was from. 
Mary had to have make the, made this connection. The connection between Jesus and David. The angel who had announced the birth of Jesus made the connection for her to the throne of David. That David was given the promise of a descendant who would reign on the throne forever. And Jesus was that descendant. What was true for David was also true for Mary. That Jesus was Mary's son. Her real flesh and blood. And also, her Lord. The Almighty God. Jesus is true God and true man. That's something worth thinking about. Jesus was brought into the world and placed in a manger. And we are amazed that it seems like even this, Mary treasured. We can also treasure the humble circumstances of Jesus' birth. That Jesus, our God, lowered himself to be born in a place where animals live, to unimpressive parents, and that his birth would be announced by some local shepherds. Because this is who Jesus came for. Unimpressive sinners. And we can marvel at the fact that Jesus came for us. Unimpressive sinners. To make us his saints. His people. It must have taken Mary a lifetime to think about the message that the shepherds gave her. That her child, the news of this child's birth, would, give, would be good news that will cause great joy to all the people. Joy of the eternal life that this child would win for us as a free gift. Joy of seeing that God himself has entered our story to save us. Joy that a Savior has been born to us. We needed a Savior. Our sinful minds and hearts needed saving. And so God sent his Son, Jesus, to die on the cross to take away all of our sins. Every last one. Words and actions and even the thoughts in our minds and the attitudes in our hearts. You are forgiven. Better news has never been shared. How difficult could it have been for Mary to change her baby's diapers and then remember that he is her Lord and her Savior? How difficult could it be for us to see Jesus die the death of a criminal on a cross and then hear that, hear that he is our Lord and our Savior? But this is the good news that God brings to us today, that Jesus was born for us to live in our place, to live the perfect life that we haven't lived, to die the death the punishment on a cross that we deserved so that we would never have to. Jesus came in our place to save us. And maybe it wasn't so hard for Mary to think of Jesus as her Lord and her Savior when she heard that angels sang his praises. These holy, powerful beings recognize Jesus, this baby lying in the manger, as their God. And Jesus could have been content to stay in heaven forever and have the angels sing his praises. But he wanted you there, too. So Jesus came from heaven and earth to save your soul so that you could be with him in eternity singing his praises forever. There is a lot we could think about. There's a lot we could let fill our hearts. What if we let this good news sit on our minds 
and on our hearts? What if we thought about the fact that God always works through history to fulfill his purpose for Jesus and for us today still? So that the confusion and the frustration at God's plans kind of fades away as we realize that God is always fulfilling his perfect purpose and that his purpose for us is always good because he loves us. What if we always let this fill our hearts that God sent his son, his one and only son, Jesus, to save me, even me, so that I always realized that I have a savior even though I don't deserve one. How would that change our outlook? Prideful thoughts would seem absurd. Forgiveness would be natural in view of how much we have been forgiven. Other people wouldn't be annoyances or objects, but other people who Jesus came to save too. The dread and the sadness may not go away. But you know what also will be there is constant joy. The joy of knowing that a Savior has been born to me and you. The joy of knowing that no matter how wild this path of life is, we know where it ends. In the eternal joys of heaven given to us as a free gift in Jesus. God sent his son, Jesus, from heaven to earth to save you. That's something to think about. Amen.